Hello and welcome to Ion Port. This program is proudly brought to you by Sirene Insurance, Gore PLC, the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Link, Marine Port Services, and Phoenix Insurance. Our proud media partner is the Business and Financial Times. This program is powered by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Now, this week, we are discussing the role of the Customs House Broker in understanding the, the rule of origin under continental trade. We had in the studios an official from the World Customs Organization, as well as a customs officer and also a customs house broker, uh, to do justice to this particular subject. Let's take a listen. If you can explain to us some of the core uh, principles behind the rules of origin and why uh, these are key in agreements like the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Uh, well, a free trade agreement is negotiated so that the uh, trade can be boosted between the partner countries. Uh, in order to do so, we take away customs duties from these uh, goods so that products become more uh, competitive and uh, they become cheaper, basically. But we want to make sure that this preferential trade only takes place between uh, the countries that have actually signed up to a free trade agreement, for instance, the AFCFTA. Um, so that is where the rules of origin come in. They are there uh, to give the economic nationality of the goods. So they are there to tell us exactly what we need to do to our goods in order for them to be originating. And the core principles behind, we have two different kinds of rules. We have rules that are so-called wholly obtained. That would be goods that come from one country only. So, for instance, cocoa from uh, Ghana or an animal that is born and raised in a country. And if that is not the case, if we use inputs from other uh, countries, uh, the rules of origin will tell us um, the, the transformation that these rules need to go through in order for them to be originating. Right. So, um, in, in such an agreement like the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, uh, we have varied uh, players. We have the customs, we have the uh, freight forwarders who just you just trained last week. We have the importers and exporters and a host of others. Now, from where you sit, what's uh, the level of appreciation of the rules of origin of these groups of people uh, that are key players and actors in, in, in the chain? I must say that from the trainings we have done in Ghana especially, we have been very um, impressed by the level of uh, knowledge and understanding already. Uh, of course, not everybody knows all the details, but there was already a, a quite good level of understanding uh, within the private sector. Um, so, uh, uh, on, in all areas, in all stakeholders, we, we saw that uh, we actually, people actually knew what they were talking about already. What role the customs division of the GRA plays in ensuring customs house brokers adhere? Uh, to the rules of origin. Thank you very much. That's in terms of compliance. In terms of compliance, yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, with the free trade agreement, um, we will continue to train. Mm. Training is, is very key. Um, the after Secretariat mm. has indicated their preparation yeah. to you know, build an after academy. Right. It tells you how important um, um, training is um, um, in, in the implementation of free trade agreements. Yeah. So we'll continue with the training for customs brokers. Mm -hmm. uh, this training would guarantee um, the correctness and completeness of documents that will be presented to us. Right. Because they serve as an interface between us and then the trading public. Absolutely. So it is important for us to train them on all these rules. Mm. And I must say that free trade agreements with the coming on of the AFCFTA is quite new mm. to both customs and then to the customs brokers. Yeah. So training is key mm. and we shall continue to you know, push this agenda 
quite, you know, uh, forward beyond this point. Right. Again, um, adhering to these rules um, um, is very important to us. And customs controls will not be relaxed. Mm. I'm saying this because it's very important for us to as much as possible eliminate origin irregularities. Right. And ensure that those, it is those who qualify or products that qualify that enjoy the preferential treatment. Right. So customs will not relax on customs controls. Mm. The risk management selectivity, you know, program system will continue to apply. Right. So that where consignments are tagged as risk to society or risk to revenue, they will be looked at carefully. Mm. Again, we will be using post-clearance audits. audits yeah. We are supposed to facilitate trade, mm. trade under free trade agreements. Yeah. But all the customs controls um, would also, so these rules would continue um, um, to be in force. Mm. Again, stakeholder engagement. The customs brokers are very important to us. Right. They represent one of our important stakeholders. Mm. And their communication with the trading public, if they don't have the right information, right. how would they communicate to the public? Mm. So it's important for us to continue to engage them yeah. in all areas of our operations. Yeah. So these three, three areas are so important to customs administration. All right. So let me come to Nana Fred Wajima of Royata. So yes, I want us to take a look at the specific challenges that your members have in terms of interpretation of the rules of origin and how to apply them uh, in the operations. Well, I mean, rules of origin, like uh, various speakers have already alluded to, mm. it is the economic nationality mm. or the product nationality. Mm. Like Mr. Deborah has already said, I mean, it's either wholly owned as in originating from Ghana, like the natural products, or sufficiently transformed. Mm. So that's where the key issues arise. Right. And when it comes to that, it's a bit tricky. So that's the need for more training, because if we don't do that, trade will not be facilitated. And the whole essence of a, a free trade area is to make uh, I mean, countries that participate, or nation states, be able to trade as a relatively lower customs duty. Mm -hmm. And to be able to take advantage of this, then you should really know your rules and know how to apply them. Yeah. I mean, either to the FTA or free trade agreement, all we're trained on is the HS code. Yeah. Basically, to be able to know how to classify and do valuation and things like that. Yeah. But now there's another layer that has been placed on top. Mm. Yes, that to know the product origin, to be able right. to classify. Mm. Because um, some of the rules state that uh, if the product is originating from, I mean, a non-participating country, mm. or like you have a work in, pro I mean, uh, work in progress, yeah. so it comes here, uh, the rule says up to about maximum 60% yes. for it to qualify. And so, I mean, these are technical things. Mm. So we have a product like, let's say, a shirt. Yeah. For instance, this uh, fugu that I'm wearing. Yes. Probably the fiber was imported from fabric, Egypt. Yeah. yeah, the fiber, actually, okay. the cotton fibers mm, mm, mm. from Egypt. Mm. It goes through maybe a certain country, and then they turn it into a yarn. Yeah. And then finally, it gets to Ghana, and then we, we do the final touch to yeah. make it become this dress that I'm wearing. Yeah. So when you have to do an export of such a dress or this amea yeah. you have to be able to determine whether it is sufficiently transformed. Mm. And if it's so, uh, the components or the various parts that came to Ghana, were they from non-originating countries or mm. from, I mean, African countries? countries yeah. So there's a technical word called accumulation. Mm. Yes, and there are various levels. So after makes it easier for us because the idea is to boost trade. Right. So for instance, if it's like I've described for the jazz, if it's mm. coming from Egypt mm. and it's going to, let's say, three countries, in Nigeria they are turning it into yarn and finally in Ghana we are doing the fabric, mm. it will still qualify as a Ghanaian product if we are exporting it to the next other country. Why? Because all those countries are supposed to be like in a form of a marriage mm. because they belong to the after. 
I believe it's only one country in Africa that's not part of the AFTA. That's Eritrea. Mm. But all the other places in the region, in the AFTA region, if we are picking, I mean, a work in progress, mm. parts of things from there to operate, it will be treated differently. Right. Yeah. So this is why it is very important, so that we can be able to get the best rates for our clients, mm. so that we can make the work of customs easier. Right. And that's why we need this training. I mean, once we have begun, there will be no let, there will be no hint. Right. We'll be training as many people. We're able to manage, we're given a quota of 30, we ended up with 39. Yeah. And uh, Meta said the, the enthusiasm she has seen the 39, here, was it companies or individuals? Oh, each person represents One a company. company. And you were 39 in all, so 39 yes. companies in yeah, all. 39 companies also. from uh, from Accor. Even though it's a Cuba program, yeah. I, we have to give slots to all our food forwarders because, right. I mean, the goods come and the importers don't go selling. And everybody them. from all the associations exactly. represented. Everybody needs to, I mean, get some training. Mm. So it will continue. We'll be rolling out as the days go by. Iron Port returns after this break. brings you quality choices with Goyle Super XP available in many goal stations nationwide it is fortified with special additives that help your engine perform better and use less fuel branch into a goal station today and energize your ride with Goyle Super XP compatible with most vehicles Goyle Super XP will feel ya will be feel Goil, good energy. Joy, Adia. Electricity, electricity. Our taxes. Yeah. Our taxes. Our future. Our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. My money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 
0243-690-419 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. Welcome to the GPHA port of Takradi, Ghana's first commercial port. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA, has in its quest to position the ports of Ghana as the leading trade and logistics hub of West Africa, embarked on a massive expansion drive at its Takrade port, the first commercial port of the country. This has resulted in a radical transformation of the initial seven berth low drafted port, which was constructed in 1928 to an ultra modern port fitted with deep drafted container, multi purpose dry bulk, and liquid bulk facilities. The 16 meter deep dry bulk terminal is the deepest in the sub region with a total key length of 800 meters. It is fitted with a combined 3 km length conveyor system, which comes with a 2,500 metric tons per hour ship loading capacity, which has greatly improved ship turnaround time at the port. The Marshall Liquid Bulk Terminal is a fully automated liquid bulk facility dredged to minus 14 chart datum and equipped with automated firefighting system. The facility is fitted with five loading arms for gasoline, diesel, LPG, bitumen, and heavy fuel. On the container side, Takrade Port's 16 meter deep EO port and ATSL container terminal with a key length of 600 is expected to receive container vessels in the third quarter of the year. Welcome back from the break. It's time for news and activities happening within the ports and maritime industry. The Chief Executive Officer of Meridian Port Services, Mohamed Samara, has appealed to stakeholders in the cargo clearance chain to refine their processes to allow for increased efficiency. According to him, it is imperative for stakeholders and customers to collaborate effectively and provide constructive feedback to the company for enhanced service delivery. He was speaking during the company's Customer Service Week celebrations. In the service environment, uh, we really need to uh, measure and, 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 and gauge the service that we're providing to our customers. And the best way to gauge it is through these forums, you know, where we can listen to them and understand what challenge they have and what they expect from us to do better. Mohamed Samara also advocated for a reduction in the 100% physical inspection of cargo at Terminal 3 while reminding customers to adhere strictly to the terminal's truck appointment system to avoid delays and ensure smooth operations. The experience that a customer gets is not just from uh, GAPOA or MPS, it's also from the statutory services. And we are really hoping that they have they can upgrade their, their kind of approach to business to the speed of trade and the logistics chain in the same manner that the expectations of people are growing. So the level of inspection is quite high and we would like to see you know, a more emphasis on the risk engine that the customs can develop to identify risky trade from non-risky trade and give the non-risky trade you know, the facility it deserves because this is the norm in any other port. You know. Some customers shared feedback on the company's operations, highlighting some operational challenges to which the Chief Financial Officer for MPS, Steen Larson, assured of a speedy resolution of the identified challenges. We need a reliable solution where you can trust whatever payment way you want to do it we ideally would like to make it 100% electronic. You do all your payments, you make all your appointments from your office, or from your truck, or from your mobile, wherever you do it. But you have to trust those solutions. And, and now, today, my feeling is when we talk to customers, it works most of the time. And that doesn't work for me. It has to work every time. 
The Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana has denied allegations that shipping lines operating in the country are exploiting Ghanaians. Speaking at a media engagement, Adam Imoro Ayana, an executive member of SOAG, stated that shipping is a business of conscience and that shipping lines have no motivation to shortchange shippers. According to him, shipping lines are not charging illegal fees and that every charge is a service rendered. Imoro Ayana emphasized that shipping lines prioritize their consumers and would not deliberately surcharge them. Everything this company is doing, and I can, I can tell you that it's for all other companies, the customer is the center. All what shipping lines are thinking before is just moving a box from one place to the other. But the bottom line is, what is the solution for the customer? And ultimately, who is ultimately the customer? We might see the person shipping as the customer, but we on the streets, who are the final consumers, become the final customer. So as much as they are thinking of only the person who is shipping, they are thinking of the person also on the streets. And that is why I'll always say that shipping, it's a business of conscience. He explained that shipping lines have stopped charging cleaning fees, except for one, and steps are being taken to address this. He also highlighted the importance of transparency in shipping costs, advocating for the introduction of terminal handling charges to determine cost drivers, to itemize costs, to identify drivers and ensure transparency. Some of the shipping lines do not even charge cleaning, or you do not see it itemized on their bill. If they charge it, I don't know. But it's not there. And those who also charge these cleaning containers, uh, this uh, container cleaning fee, they charge the particular, the specific container that is dirty. That is what they are doing. Except one line that we are yet to ask why they haven't been able to, you know, also follow the full steps of all others. Because a charge should be a service rendered, and we all agree. Imaro Ayana asserted that shipping creates opportunity for global commerce and that shipping lines comply with the laws of every country. He said shipping lines contribute significantly to Ghana's economy. Citing figures for 2022, he revealed that nine shipping lines paid $9.3 million to the Ghana Maritime Authority and the Ghana Shippers Authority and $12.9 million in corporate income tax. He encouraged understanding and dialogue to address industry challenges when they crop up so as to improve the business environment in Ghana. Shipping creates opportunity for global commerce. Without that, where would we be? So it's imperative and it's important that we all appreciate and understand this industry. Because no matter what we do, it will have an impact on our very being. It could be negative and it could be positive. That said, I'm not saying shipping lines are saints. Just like all businesses are saints, there will be challenges. But these challenges have to be dealt with. Go Local, a non-government organization originating from Ukraine, is seeking to use the port of Tama as a logistic hub for the import of grains products from Eastern Europe for its sustainable project in Sub-Saharan Africa. Since its establishment in 2016, the NGO has accelerated industrial, green, innovative, educational and creative development of Ukraine's region and with support from donor partners is seeking to bring the world's practice of sustainable development and grant funding to Africa. The Ukrainian head of diplomatic mission in Ghana, Ivan Lukachak, led Go Local and their Guinean partners on a working visit to the director of port Sandra Opoku last Wednesday to explore the potential for a collaboration with the port. We see uh, Ghana like a, a potential uh, logistic hub uh, in uh, West Africa. So our president uh, meet uh, a few times uh, during this year uh, in uh, um, World Economic Forum in Davos, uh, for example, and they spoke about the, uh, creating the log logistical hubs uh, in uh, uh, Ghana. So we decided that uh, Ghana can be uh, a very uh, prospective place in terms of uh, replication of our activities uh, because, first of all, it is a development market like, very, uh, like Ukraine. 
and secondly our partners from US and Germany were also working here so we would like to leverage these connections here and to use them in, in projects in bilateral Ukrainian Ghanaian projects and solely in projects in Ghana. The director of Port of Tema, Sandra Opoku, embraced the opportunity to use the port as a conduit for food import so far as it falls within the laws of the country and does not infringe on national security. So with the, you know, with the feed meal, certainly I think um, it's something you should uh, look at seriously and then also use the um, this uh, free zones, the free zones um, which is close to the port. Um, they have land that is developed, you know, that uh, you can acquire for a factory or whatever so that um, once you have um, the port close by the export once you export more than 70 percent you qualify you know under some um, exemptions. exemptions at the Ghana free zones so this is just to throw light on what we have Nana Kwejo Aminiampo a local partner for Go Local told Iron Port more our purpose of coming here is to understand the operation of port and harbor in as much as we are going to bring a lot of things from Ukraine to Ghana because one of the pivots of the visit in Ghana is full security and sustainability. So without understanding the operations, the norms of whatever goes in in port and harbor, we cannot be operational. Management, staff, clients, and stakeholders of the International Maritime Hospital have come together to double up efforts in the fight against breast cancer during this year's Pink October celebration. The hospital has launched this year's awareness campaign under the theme Stop the Stigma, Be Supportive, underscoring the need for a more collective approach to fight breast cancer. IMA will engage the wider public with various outreach programs throughout the entire month of October in addition to its annual free screening exercises and discounted medical services at the hospital premises in Tema Community 3, all in an effort to lessen the devastating impact of breast cancer in Ghana. During the launch of IMA's Pink October last Tuesday, various health practitioners emphasized the need for early detection in the fight against breast cancer. Breast cancer is most common amongst women. Uh, and it's about 2.3 million cases that are diagnosed each year, according to WHO in 2002. In Ghana, we have about 4,500 new cases diagnosed every year. And about 50% of these women tragically die from the disease because they present late, because of stigma and all that, because they visit herbalists and all that. What is IMA saying? The cost of mammogram is fixed. But IMA is doing a whooping 25% discount on mammograms and breast ultrasounds all throughout the month of October. And if there's anything to take back home today, it's that we know that breast cancer is real. We know that early detection saves life. And how do we detect early? Screening, screening, screening. The launch provided an opportunity for medical professionals from IMA to educate their staff, clients and stakeholders gathered and disabuse myths and misconceptions about breast cancer so that they too can become informed ambassadors for the fight against breast cancer. Some survivors of breast cancer also shared their experiences and words of encouragement with others diagnosed with the disease. All I want to say is you have to tell yourself that I will go through this and I will survive it. If you don't do that, you will give up on the way. I've gone through everything. My recovery was very fast. Very fast though. I mean, anytime I tell someone that, oh, I went through this, they were like, what? And they didn't tell us what's about sir. The stigma alone about cancer. I couldn't tell anyone. And for now, I'm even able to tell people that this is what I went through. Great. Great. 
Members of the Committee of Freight Forwarder Associations are the latest to benefit from the European Union World Customs Organization Rules of Origin Africa program. This initiative aims to support the African continent to improve its capacity to deal with rules of origin and ultimately to support the harmonized and well-coordinated implementation and application of the rules of origin under Annex 2 of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement and other regional and international commitments. The program, which had been restricted locally to customs officials since its inception, is the first one done specifically for customs brokers and freight forwarders who serve as intermediaries between government actors and traders. The Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Trade and Tariffs at the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Fetchen Akutu, encouraged the private sector to immerse themselves in such training programs to equip them for effective intracontinental trade. Knowledge gap is very, very, very dangerous. That's why I was very happy when I heard that uh, our consultant had decided to take you on this program. And uh, let me mention that this is the basics, and uh, we have an advanced one. It shouldn't be the end. Invite her again to come and take you through the advanced program. And also let me mention it to your executives that every year we have an origin uh, a meeting at the customs head office. You can register and participate where you get to hear the problems from other parts of the world. The president of the Customs Brokers Association Ghana, Nana Fridua Ajimano Furiata, described the three-day training in Accra as groundbreaking for his industry and hinted at more of such in the future. So we're definitely going to take the conversation to the next level and see how, I mean, we can get training coming more frequently. And because, like I'm saying, this is groundbreaking, now the WCO realizes that for any training session that is arranged between Originally, they only train customs officials. So any training session now that's going to be happening in this part of the world, it's going to have two components. The government section, that's for the customs, and then the private sector. Lead origin experts for the program at the World Customs Organization, Meta Verdelin Azam, who was the training facilitator, elaborated on the concept of rules of origin to eye on port. Well, rules of origin, it's what will determine the nationality of the goods. So in a free trade agreement, it will be mentioned what does it take for you? What do you have to do in your country for the goods to be originating? Do they come entirely from your country or do you use inputs from other countries? And in that case, what is the work you need to carry out here in your country for the goods to be originating? She emphasized the importance of properly roping in the private sector for the success of AFTA and other intracontinental trade agreements. I think that training on all levels is very important, whether it is for customs, for the intermediate uh, business or for the business people themselves. We all need to understand the rules in order to take uh, advantage of them. And traders need to understand the rules so that they can make sure their, their goods are fulfilling the uh, requirements when they want to export to other countries. You cannot count on um, brokers or whoever to know that for you. It's the trader who knows uh, his or her products. It's now time for International Port and Maritime News. AP Mola Mesk celebrated the naming of its latest dual fuel methanol container vessel Alexandra Mesk last Thursday at the port in Felisto, England. The 16,000 TEU vessel is the fifth in the series as the company has moved forward with its large dual fuel methanol ships and the sixth overall introduced to the Mesk fleet in the past 13 months. Alexandra Mesk joins her sister ship, Anne Mesk which was the first of the class, which was named in January in Korea, where they are all being built. The company highlights that the new methanol-enabled ships are at the core of MESC's ambitious decarbonization plans as low-emission methanol can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 65 to 90 percent 
compared to conventional fossil fuels such as banker oil. Analysts have highlighted over the past few years the dramatic growth in container ship new building, but according to the well-known group Alpha Liner, the pace is not likely to slow due to demand and the need to revitalize aging fleets. Careers are under pressure to modernize and expand their fleet both to meet the need for additional capacity as well as emerging environmental regulations. The other book for container ship construction continues to reach new heights with Alpha Linen reporting in an analysis that in terms of TEU capacity, orders are the largest they have ever been. Alpha Liner's closely followed top 100 ranking of the sector shows container shipping has reached new levels with a capacity of nearly 30.9 million TEUs. They calculate that there are 7,125 active vessels representing a total of 366 million debt weight tonnage. Now, schedules of vessels in the port, those at Anko region, those expected in the coming week, plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rates, you need to know to clear your goods from the port next. We have your comments coming up. Maggie from Tema says, kudos to the panel. Customs brokers definitely need more capacity building programs to deal with the increasing complexity of international trade. Sami from Accra says, I'm impressed by the work being done and I would like to urge the GRA to keep the course down for training for smaller brokers so we can all attend in future. It's now time for the word or phrase of the day. Freight release refers to the evidence that the freight charges for the cargo have been paid. If in writing, it may be presented at the pier to obtain release of the cargo. Normally, once the freight is paid, Freight releases are arranged without additional documentation, also known as freight bill receipt. So that's all for this week's episode of Ion Port. Thank you for watching and thanks to the entire crew. Join us same time next week and also don't forget to follow us on our various social media platforms on your screens.